Hi, welcome to our YouTube channel. Anyone can be a math person. Make sure that you click the subscribe button below to get video updates and comment if you have any topics you'd like to see us covered that we haven't already. Hey everyone, today we're gonna to talk about how to create a Kahoot. So first, before I do that, I wanna show you what it looks like for those two people that have not used it before. What you're gonna see here, this where this purple board is, it kind of looks like a whiteboard, if this was your classroom. Um, this is what is displayed on the teacher screen. So if you're running this in person and it's projecting from your computer, this is what would be showing up on your projector. If you're running it through Zoom synchronously, this is what's gonna be showing on your Zoom screen that you're projecting to your students. Over here is what the student view looks like on their device. So to play this in your course, students all need to have a device that they're using, which can be a phone, it can be a computer, a tablet, any device that can connect to the internet works for Kahoot, which is great. Um, and so if you're running this synchronously in person and maybe not everyone has a phone, I haven't run into that yet, but if you do run into that, you can always have people work in teams. Um, so that at least usually there's at least between two people, one of them has a, a phone that you can use. If you're doing this through Zoom, what you're going to want to do is just tell them to either get their phones out and the, so they can have this main screen on their computer or to open up a new window in their computer to use to do the actual game pin Kahoot. So as a teacher, the first thing I'm going to do is I always do player versus player. Okay, so then we'll click play. And what you're going to see, this is the screen that first shows up. And then it'll show our homepage as people are, are getting in. So what students do is they go to this kahoot.it, or if they have the Kahoot app, they can use the Kahoot app, and then they'll type this in for the game pen. So 372312. Now this is a video that I put in myself. I think it's really fun to actually have some fun engaging videos that tell students what this is gonna be about. This one is about trigonometry. So it just kind of like amps up the class, makes it fun, as fun as a math class can be, as you're waiting in the lobby for people to actually put in their names. Um, so once they put in their names over here, then they'll put in their nickname. So if you are playing this and you want students to stay anonymous, they can come up with their own nicknames. Or if you are doing this as a challenge in your asynchronous class and you want to have a record of everybody, have them use their real names. I'm just going to use my real name, if I can spell it right. So now you'll see the student's name show up on the board, and once you have everybody in there, you're ready to go, and you can click start. See, it's just fun. My, when I played this in my class, when I did this Kahoot before, they literally started dancing. So then you'll click start, and on the teacher screen, you're gonna see is where we have the directions. On the student screen is just gonna be four things. So I'm gonna show you all the different types of questions you can do in Kahoot. One is a quiz question, and the quiz question is basically multiple choice. So you can see I have which side length is adjacent to angle A, I have an image that I've inputted in here, and then the students on their screen just see the colors and the shapes. So if a student's colorblind, they're still able to use this feature because everything is done by shapes, so they'd match it up with the correct shapes here, or they can deal with the, just the, pick, the color if they're not colorblind. So here, the angle that's adjacent to angle A is 12. So I would, 12 is in yellow, and I just ran out of time, but I would normally click 12 here. So normally you're gonna set that timer to be where it's enough time for students to get through. End of each question, you're gonna see how many students got things right and how many got them wrong. And then you're also gonna see a leaderboard where here it's all zero, because I got it wrong. So let me actually answer the next question. So this is what a true false question looks like. Um, and these are great to use if there's just two answers. So here, this is a false statement. This is so common in my college algebra course that they miss. Here's where the timer is. And as an instructor, you can set this timer from 10 seconds all the way up to four minutes. So I recommend definitely don't do it too quickly so students aren't feeling pressed for time and rushed for time. They all have enough time to really think about the problem before they put in their answer. So they put in their answer. And so now it shows here that I did it correctly. You can see the point value. So this was out of a thousand points. So you get more points the quicker you put in the correct answer. So here as an instructor, it's gonna show me what how everyone did in the class. In this case, I'm the only one. So one of me did great. But um, if it was multiple class with maybe 10 people, I can see right off the bat, oh, all 10 got right. I can move on, they understand this. Or usually for this specific question in my college algebra class, a lot of them get it wrong and I say, okay, so let's talk about this. 
and I'll do a quick little mini lesson before I move on to the next question. And you can see the leaderboard goes up. It's kind of fun. It just creates these fun gamification components. There's fun music that's getting played in the background. So this type is a, this is called a puzzle or a jumble, Kahoot jumble or Kahoot puzzle. Um, they've changed the name a few times, but it says create the equation from this sentence. A number that is decreased by 12 is 18. So this is really great to use when you're, especially for these types of problems where they're having to put things in order. Um, I really like it for having students change, translate English sentences into math equations because they usually struggle with that. So it's gonna be a number, so that would be X. So that's the blue, it's gonna go first here. Again, this is what the student sees. Decreased is a minus, so that's the green by 12, so that's yellow, is 18, so that's red. So now I feel like these all match up with each of those boxes, put it in, and you can see I was able to get those points in 100% of the class, AKA just me, because I'm the only one doing it, got it right, and you can see my point value go up. So this is always will show the top five leaders of the class. And so for this one, this is how you can put an instructional video in your Kahoot. You can actually add in these videos. I found this one from Khan Academy. If you have your own video, you can upload it to YouTube and have it linked here. And this is how you can kind of pause a Kahoot game if you're gonna be teaching a new concept and have them all look up, watch this quick little mini lesson. And then after that, there'll be a question over it to make sure they understood it. So that video was all over how to find the slope of a line. So now I'll have a question that goes over it. This is a multiple choice question. I'm just gonna put in a random answer. Oh, I got it right, nice. So, um, and again, you can see I got more points here because I was a lot quicker in putting the right answer in. I'm gonna get it wrong and you can see here I'm on fire because I have three right. It has these little things on here, which is kind of fun. So I'm gonna get one wrong just so you can see what it looks like when you have something wrong. So this type of question is an input question. So there's not multiple choice here. They have to figure this out and then they have to type in their answer. So I'm gonna type in a wrong answer and say the slope is five. So you can see it'll put up the all the answers students had as well as what the right answer is. And then the wrong answers will all drop and the right answer is up there. And here it says incorrect. And, and I do love these little statements that they say if they do get it wrong, because um, it kind of keeps those students motivated. Like no one said it would be easy or they'll have, you can do this, or hang in there. So it's it kind of keeps those students with getting some positive reinforcement to keep on trying. Um, and this is again, like, it's just a really good way to help students if, they're, if they get it wrong, now instead of doing it just like, here's a worksheet, do it, they get the question wrong, they don't get the points, they're wanting to look and pay attention to what you're teaching for what they did wrong right then and there. They're wanting to really see that. So you can see here, I didn't get any points missed. And then you can also do polling questions that aren't worth any values. Um, this is great to do kind of like towards the end of a Kahoot just to see how's everyone feeling. Are you understanding this? Are you still really lost? What are some adjustments that I need to make? And then you can again look at that as a student or a teacher and make some adjustments there. And then what's super fun is at the end it has these podiums. So since there's only one person doing it, it didn't do the fun animations, but it'll first show the third place person cheering for it, second place person cheering for it, and then the first place podium comes up and then big trophy, confetti comes down and everyone's going crazy with cheering. It's super fun. It just gets students really excited. So now let's talk about how to create a Kahoot. So now you've seen it. Now let's look at how to create it. So when you go into Kahoot, you can see this discover. I really don't recommend creating any Kahoots by, um, like from scratch. There's so many Kahoots that are already out there and it's so much easier to take one already done and then tweak it. So let's say I'm looking for how to first slope, something on slope. So if I type slope in, you're gonna see there's 284,000 results. So I've got all of these to choose from. This one has 34,000 plays, so this is most likely a pretty good one. What I'll do is I'll just look at them, look at the questions. If the questions look like ones that I want, great, I'll end up using it. If they look like a question that I, um, you know, I maybe need to tweak it or add some things, then I'll just go with it, I'll edit it and make it what I need it to be. So for me, this one is just about having equations of lines and I see that there's not even um, tick marks on these graphs, so I would not pick one like this 
because that just doesn't, not that it's bad, it just doesn't match what I'm doing in my class. But if I look at this one, let's see if this one matches it a little bit more. Yeah, so this one actually has the actual uh, scales on them. So I'm gonna start with this one. And what I'll do is I'll click edit and that's gonna allow me to duplicate it and save it in my own Kahoot. If you like the Kahoot as is, you can just click play and then you're good to go. And now you have it, so it'll say duplicate of, but I just usually change that and just have slope intercept form of a graph. Done. This is where you can change with the first screen that students see. So that's where I had that video that I put in there. So you can change and have a, or sorry, right here, the lobby video. So right here is where you can put in if there's a YouTube video and there's so many fun ones and just funny, like just getting a song to just get, get students into it is great. So um, Wendy, who also is on this YouTube channel, she loves to do things from like Jack Black from this, um, Oh gosh, School of Rock, I think is what it's called. That movie, there's just so many fun little clips you can do that just get students excited and engaged. So you post that YouTube link here. And then what we'll go through is you can edit these questions if you want to. So here's the timer. So you can change the timer anywhere from five seconds up into till four minutes, which is great. So when you're picking a time, definitely pick a time that it would take for a student to get through it. Not your average, but maybe maybe let's say this normally would take 30 seconds. I would give 60 seconds for it. That way it's not a full four minutes. So if a student doesn't know the answer, they're, you're not just sitting there waiting for four minutes for one student. But it gives those students that maybe need a minute to look through their notes or maybe are a little slower at processing that time so that everyone's kind of on the same page. And then the point values. So I usually keep them at 1,000 unless I'm doing a poll question, like how are we feeling about this, then I'll make that zero. But this is just a slider on here. And then answer options. If you have more than one solution, you'd click the multi-select. And then if it's just one, you click the select. So there's how you would go through and you can edit pictures and all of that. If you wanted to create questions from scratch or a Kahoot from scratch, what I recommend, so I'm gonna actually finish this. And after you're done, I always recommend testing it yourself before you have students do it. But if you wanted to go through and create one from scratch, what you would do is click create. And I'm not, I don't have time to go through all of these templates. Um, Kahoot actually keeps on adding templates to this, which is great. I recommend, they've got so many great things on their website that I'll talk about each of these. But these are great templates to use if you wanna just have a basic to, uh, like guide of how to set it up. So for example, when there's a formative assessment one, which is great for reviewing, it'll say, okay, do a low level question. Now do one that's harder, now do this. And so it really makes sure that you're having all different levels of rigor and you're doing it in a progressive way. Um, blind cahoots, we can talk about that in a separate video if anyone's interested in it. This is what I do, um, I flip my classes and this is what I use for the first day so that it's still kind of like a flipped class even though I can't have them I can't expect that they come knowing anything on the first day. Um, so let's just go through and do create. So this is where once you've got create, you kind of have a blank canvas. So it always starts out with these multiple choice questions. You can plug images in. So let's just say I had find and then just some step, some examples. This is the math palette that's here. You can see it's super lacking. So you can literally just do subscripts and superscripts and then the, this dash thing to show that it's a uh, division. So what I usually recommend is if you have an equation that's not just y equals 2x plus 5, which I still feel like that looks a little ugly, what I recommend doing is actually opening up Microsoft Word and using the equation editor and typing it into Microsoft Word and then take a picture of it. So I have, I use Windows, so in Windows there's this snipping tool it's in all of the Windows programs. So just click new, take a quick snip. I don't wanna have that cursor in there. And so now I have an equation that would have looked extremely ugly if I used just the Kahoot palette. It probably would have actually been impossible. And I can save it in here. So save it as my Kahoot. And then what I'll do is I'll go back to, so I'll go back to the Kahoot and I'll click upload image and put my image in. Maybe I just have to click that, there we go. And so now it's a lot prettier. So I could say, use the formula below to evaluate the limit. Um, 
and then they you can have different answers. When you are putting in answers for the multiple choice, definitely pick distractors um, for your options, for the wrong options, and make sure that you choose ones that are similar to ones that students would miss. So for example, if maybe they drop negatives, maybe they're finding slope and they're going, you know, they do the rise and the run, but they're doing the run to the left instead of doing it to the right. Um, so just, you know, where so put in the positive answer and the negative answer of the slope so that they're really having to think through it. And you're getting rid of those misconceptions that students have right off the bat where they're making those mistakes here in the Kahoot instead of on the exam. When you go to click add question, there's going to be all these different types. So quiz question is just multiple choice. True, false is what it is. You guys saw all of these different, um, ones used in the sample Kahoot at the beginning of the this video. Type answer, that's how you do the input one. So I'm gonna show that one because that's not as straightforward. So you type your question in, in, so find the slope of, or between the points, two, four, five, and let's do four, three. So that slope is going to end up being negative one. So you type the answer in here, negative one oops, as a, an answer. Now, you might have a student that uses a space, negative space one. So I would have that be another accepted answer for students. So you can click in if there's multiple ways that they could type in an answer or simplify things, you can have those both as options. So that's how you do those. And then the other one that you'd want to use, so the Kahoot puzzle, you guys saw that with, um, that's when they're doing those drag and drops so when we did the English sentence um, into a math equation. The slide one is the one where I pulled that Khan Academy video for finding the equation of a line. So if you're creating a Kahoot and you want to have an instructional video in there, or maybe just a funny video, you can go through here and actually type, so I could put finding the, or how to find the equation of a line. And then I can go to YouTube, find that link, paste that link here, and it'll paste it straight in here. And you can just have little, if you have any text, you can just say, use your video notes to take notes on this video. And then afterwards, you'd want to have a question. So the import slides is a really cool feature, but it is for the super paid version. So I don't recommend it. That's where you can import PowerPoint slides or Google slides. Um, so it's cool, but I just don't think it's worth the money. I would just stick with the free version. And then once you're done, it'll validate your Kahoot. And you can see I have an issue because I didn't put in all of the solutions. I didn't have put in any answers to this. So it'll tell you where you're gonna have issues. I'm just going to put in random things and then pick one that's right. So now I should be able to just hit done. You'll put in your title, description if you want, click continue, and then you can go through and actually test it out after that. So that's kind of the basics on how to make a who. Again, I don't recommend creating one from scratch. I really recommend instead creating one from an already existing Kahoot and just tweaking it by adding in problems that you want if it doesn't have all the problems you want or by um, editing the problems that are already in there. Let us know if you guys have any other videos you'd like to see. Please comment below and we can go in depth in anything else you're looking for. Thanks.